Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. I hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, a few things to get to today. First of all, I want to start off by saying that the uh, the challenge, the hammer challenge, is Wednesday is the uh, is the uh, cutoff date. But um, if you're going to send me any photographs, it has to be sent in by tomorrow night, Tuesday night, because I got to put it together. So don't don't send it to me on Wednesday and think it can get into the video. It's because the video will be posted on Wednesday. So if you have photographs that you wanted uh, sent in, please send it in by. Uh, by tonight or tomorrow at the latest, okay? Uh, first off, I wanted to, uh, today we we're going to talk about, uh, do a little basic instruction here. Uh, my buddy Brad from Brad's Workbench uh, had w mentioned about, uh, talking about uh, bolts and hardenings of bolts and the grading of bolts and nuts, obviously. So uh, I want to talk real quick on that. I'm no expert on anything. But uh, I, there are some people that have never even seen or heard about this, and this is kind of what I'm basing this for. So let's go check out some bolts. Now, last week when I was at the, um, uh, the tool meet in Long Island here, I picked up this bolt. This was a, a school bolt or whatever. I guess they used it, and you could see here it says big bolt. Uh, and it was a uh, big bolt problem. It was a classroom bolt they used to use, I guess, and it's, uh, it's a big one. I love big stuff, you know, and... And uh, I picked this up, and it's uh, it's pretty heavy. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to show you the dimensions of this bolt here. And uh, if you wanted to pick up a bolt like this, you would say, well, I don't even know what size it is. So let me show you how you would measure Okay, so when we wanted to measure something like this, especially a big bolt like this, we're not using a micrometer or any of the smaller tools. It's a big, heavy bolt. And um, we want to measure it. We, we don't usually include the head size. We only go from the bottom of the head to the bottom of the bolt. So if we measure it here, just using a regular ruler, you could see it's a, just about 11 inches. Uh, this would be an 11 inch bolt. And the head on this bolt alone is two inches, so it's it's a big bolt. And if you wanted to measure the thickness of the bolt, uh, you just get a pair of calipers like this, and you pass it over here so that it passes through. Tighten it up just a little bit so that you just have a little bit of friction as you pass through, and then you would measure this across. And uh, we would use here. I'm going to use a ruler here, and you'd see this is an inch and three quarter. Uh, this is an inch and three quarter thick bolt, okay, by 11 inches. Now, we got to get the teeth, you know, the uh, the thread pitch. And to get the thread pitch here, uh, I've showed this before, but we get, use a, what's called a thread pitch gauge. And uh, you can see here all the different pitches it has on here. And to use a thread pitch gauge, what you have to do is you, you put a piece of a white or something that's uh, like this behind it, because you're going to look, and I'll show you how to work now, it. Now, how to use the uh, thread pitch gauge, uh, you basically look at the threads, and you kind of figure out which one it's going to be, you know. So, you see, th we don't usually get to use the big side of this gauge, but uh, this is some big threads here. And uh, you take it like this, and you, you place it over here. And when you place it against the threads, you got to look very close. Now, I'm going to zoom in here, but you can see here, you see there's that gap in there, and uh, it doesn't really sit exactly right. So that you can see that's uh, the pitch on that is uh, five, and a, five and a half. You can see it's stamped on there. So that's not right. So then we'll go to five. This is a five teeth per inch, TPI. And we'll put that on there. And look at that. No light, no uh, sh shows up. That's a perfect five teeth per inch so that's how we measure so we know that this is an inch and three quarter by 11 inch by five teeth per inch now well, what do you think this bolt weighs Take a look at that bolt and say what do you think a bolt like this would weigh i'm going to put on the scale and i'll tell you what it weighs at the end okay of now that we know how to measure the uh the size and the thread of the bolt now you, you on top of the bolt you want to see how uh, strong a bolt is now there are different bolts used for different uh obviously for different jobs now uh when you're assembling something out of wood you would basically use a standard this is a uh, there's no markings on this whatsoever that could be either a grade one or two usually two uh, bolt and that's because the wood will break before the bolt does so anytime you have something that's uh, you know doesn't require a lot of strength you use a, just a standard bolt because they're inexpensive and they're they're not heat treated uh, next up is we have what's called a grade five now again the gradings do go through one through ten one two three four but you know, usually they only carry the, the basics, which is grade 
uh, two, which is the ones that aren't marked, grade five, grade eight. Those are the ones you're going to find usually, but they do make different ones. But, uh, you know, we, we won't be concerned with that. Now, uh, when you see three lines like this, uh, you always add two, so that's a grade five, even though there's three lines. Um, if you see over here, you see six lines, that would be a grade eight. Now, you know, don't concern yourself with any other markings other than lines, because a lot of them are manufacturing marks. And now, typically when you look for a hardened bolt, like when you see, they usually yellow zinc coated. So whenever you see something like this, you say, well, okay, you basically you know that's a hardened bolt. However, they do come hardened. Here's a grade eight that's not yellow zinc coated. And uh, you can see the LE is the manufacturing mark. And uh, I have this little chart here to show you. This is how the gradings look here. If there's nothing on there, that's basically a grade two. Uh, three marks, you add two, that's grade five. If you have six marks here, you add two, that's grade eight. Now, you can also have them marked here, but you don't usually see them like this, but they do also mark them on one side of the bolt. And uh, so that's for standard uh, SAE or standard bolts. Now for metric, it's a little different, of course. Metric's got to be different. So they do it with the numbers. Uh, it starts with like, you know, a 4.6 to a 5.8 would be considered a, uh, a grade two, low grade bolt. 8.8 uh, won't have these markings. I put them there to show you that would be a grade five. A 10.9 would be equivalent to a grade eight. And a 12.9 would be harder. And that's usually what they use for like Allen cap or socket screws. Now, many times you'll be using a washer along with your nut and, and bolt. And uh, a lot of times there'll be, sometimes they'll have some markings on them or whatever. But a lot of times you could tell that if they're hardened by the zinc, uh, the yellow zinc coating. But because these don't have really a stress uh, factor in them, they're, you know, uh, a lot of times they're not graded or marked. So you just have to uh, kind of just hope that you're getting the right ones. But however, with the nuts, that's very important because all nuts are marked just like bolts are. A lot of people don't realize it. If you're going to use a grade eight bolt, you need a grade eight nut. Now, um, there's markings on here. You can see these two little lines and, and you can see here these two little lines on the top there. And let me show you how the markings are because that's pretty interesting. A lot of people don't know about how that works. Here is your typical uh, nuts that you have. And um, over here, they used to have, just like with the bolt markings, with the three lines, you add two, that would be a grade five. And here was uh, six lines going around and that would be a grade eight. However, uh, they stopped, that was the old way of doing it. Now they kind of went to just uh, two markings, okay? And what you have to look for is how far these markings are apart. So if these markings are 120 degrees apart, you can see here, this is 120 degrees apart. No matter what the marking is, it's usually a line, two lines or a line and a dot. That's a grade five bolt. These are all grade five nuts, okay? Because they have them 120 degrees apart. However, uh, the old markings here were all the way around the six lines and they're 60 degrees apart. So with these two, if you see two here like this or a, a, a line and a dot, 60 degrees apart, that's grade eight. So these are all grade eight nuts on the bottom. So that's how you look and, and measure and see what the grade of your nuts are. So the are. reason it's important to be able to read a nut and bolt because if you're replacing one or you're doing a job that requires something, you can... Uh, you could determine what uh, the bolt is or whether or not you need a hard or soft bolt and uh, the strength of the bolt or nut. And um, let me show you some applications of why you might use a hardened nut and bolt compared to a softer nut. Now bolt. you're probably wondering if uh, if bolts are you know much better when they're harder, why don't they just make everything out of hardened bolts? It's because of the cost factor and things like that. You know, uh, a hardened bolt like this is made from a different alloy. This is a regular plain low carbon steel bolt. This here might have more carbon and, and different alloys. That This bolt is maybe four to five times the price of this one. So when designing something, for example, let's say we needed a, a television stand, you know, something I was going to use a television stand. This was holding just a, a TV. A regular bolt would be plenty strong enough because a regular bolt might be good for 50,000 pounds. And uh, so why, why spend the money for a hardened bolt for a TV stand? However, 
if this was going to be um, on a, let's say, railing where somebody could fall, then you would want a uh, hardened bolt because now we don't want to take a chance in this breaking, especially if it has to do with some kind of railing. This might be the weak point. So that's why you have the uh, different uh, grade bolts and what you would use them now, for. Now, usually bolts, be besides having the markings on top, they're rated in different for... Uh, PSI so you could figure out what size and uh, strength you need and there's usually three things you'll see that's uh, on a chart when it comes to the uh, the bolts you'll see a proof load a minimum yield strength and a minimum tensile strength and what that means is a proof load basically is how much weight you can put on that bolt every single day and there'll be no damage, no deformation of the threads, and you can use that all day long at that weight, you're very safe. Minimum yield strength is that's at what weight the uh, threads will start to deform and the bolt will start to stretch where it becomes dangerous. That's the minimum yield strength. So in other words, that, that's a very tricky number. Now, the minimum tensile strength, that's at what point that bolt will break. So those are the three numbers that you have to go by when you're designing something. And there's different kinds of loads on now, here bolt. in a situation like this. If there was some leverage pulling up on this area, like if it was a railing or something, that would be considered a tensile a load. What kind of tensile strength is going to be needed for that bolt to hold if there was some kind of load trying to lift it up and shear off that head? Another type be of a load. shear load, and a shear load is when you have lateral forces pushing down where you might have some kind of shearing action. And let me show you on the dake where they have uh, some bolts put on, uh, high strength bolts to avoid the shear forces. Now we're over here at the dake and you can see these two, four bolts up here. One, two, three, four. These are hardened bolts, they're metric bolts, they're 8.8 .8 bolts, which is a grade five. And the reason they have those bolts like that is because there's a shear action. When uh, the weight is uh, uh, applied to the piston here, it wants to push up on these I-beams, which could create a shearing action. So instead of putting regular bolts, they put a hardened bolt in here. And who knows, instead of putting one big heavy duty uh, grade eight bolt, maybe they figured that two smaller grade five bolts, whatever it is, but that's what the engineers designed so that uh, you wouldn't have that shearing action. So I hope that might have sparked some interest on the fascinating world of uh, nuts and bolts because they uh, they really are amazing when you think about what they can do and the, and the, the forces that they withstand. Uh, let me show you one more thing on that big bolt that you might not have seen or noticed. Okay, we're back to this beautiful, fascinating bolt that I bought. And um, now, if you notice, there is one part of this bolt that's a little different than most that you might see. And that's this little section here. You see this little enlarged section? This is called a shoulder bolt. And the reason that they have this here is because remember we were talking about that shearing action? Well, a shoulder bolt is a way to stop that shearing action without going up the next size in the bolt. So by adding the little bit of metal here where you might have that shearing force take place, you can save a little extra metal from having the whole bolt that size. So that's real interesting. Again, that's called the shoulder bolt. Do you know what this little hole is for? Very interesting. I know a lot of you are uh, laughing because you already know what that is. But um, that little hole is because the nut that would go on this bolt would be considered or called a crown nut or a castle nut. And uh, they call it a crown because it looks like a crown, a king's crown, or a, uh, the castle, the top of a castle. And what this nut would do when you would go on, it would screw on to the bolt and then that hole would line up here and you would put a cotter pin through and that would lock the nut from, uh, from backing off the bolt. Really interesting. I mean, this is great stuff. Okay, let's take a look and see how much that bolt weighs in at. Okay, the weight of this bolt is 12 pounds, 0.12 ounces. So it's just over 12 pounds. That's something else, huh? That's a heavy bolt right Okay, there. so in closing, I want to thank Brad from Brad's Workbench on YouTube and uh, Instagram on uh, on suggesting today's video. I love talking about bolts, and uh, that's, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that subject. So uh, anyway, I hope you all have a nice day. Take care. Thanks very much for tuning in. Bye-bye now.